It's Renee. Okay. Girls' Government was founded by Member of Parliament Sherry DeNovo, whose goal is to encourage young girls to engage more in the political process. This year, Ms. DeNovo invited female students from Toronto's James Colnan Catholic Elementary School and Swansea Junior and Senior Public School to participate in this initiative. Beginning in September, we would meet Ms. DeNovo and her executive assistant once a month, a month and discuss various social issues, the political environment, and the role of women in politics. We were asked to asked to select an important social issue that we were interested in re researching. After much discussion, our group decided on learning about bicycle safety. This issue is especially personal to many girls in, in the girls' government program. In November 2012, while cycling to work, Mr. Tom Sampson, a very dedicated grade two teacher at Toronto Swansea Public School died after his bicycle collided with two vans at the intersection of Lansdowne Avenue and Davenport Road. The girls felt that researching bicycle safety would help honor his memory. Learning this topic has taught us many things. For example, the Ontario Highway Traffic Act legislates how vi vehicles such as cars and bicycles may be used on Ontario's roads. In Toronto, in Toronto, adults over the age of 18 are not required to wear helmets. However, children and young adult, adults 18 and under are required by law to wear a helmet while cycling. Also, in Toronto, if you park a motor vehicle in, in a bicycle lane or cycle track, you may be fined $150. We also learned that the Ontario Ministry of Transportation has a cycling strategy that outlines what work needs to be done and help to help improve and promote cycling as an alternate mode of transportation for the province of Ontario. To improve bicycle safety, we are asking the government to continue focusing on improving cycling infrastructures, making streets safer, and increase cycling tourism opportunities. We believe that the government should continue looking into expanding the cycling infrastructure across the province. According to a government survey, 78% of Ontarians would be willing to cycle more if there was a better cycling infrastructure in place. Many countries, such as the Netherlands, have invested in their cycling infrastructure and have seen tremendous growth in the number of people who cycle to and from work. Consequently, the Ontario government should consider investing in intermodal connections between cycling and public transit that is easy and convenient for people to use. This will encourage people to cycle more, which in return will cause people to live a healthier lifestyle and help reduce our carbon footprint. Another area the government should focus on is making streets safer for cyclists. The government is encouraged to continue providing safety training and education to people who share the road with the cyclists. In addition, the government should enforce cycling and driving violations more consistently in order to increase overall safety. We are also encouraging the government to help increase the cycling tourism opportunities by developing trails that tourists would be interested in using while visiting various places in Ontario. This endeavor will create jobs and bring money to our economy. These are the areas we would like the government to focus on in regards to bicycle safety. I'm sure you're all aware that there are many cycling advocacy groups in Ontario that support bike safety and building more bike lanes in, and trails in Ontario. You're probably asking, how will bike lanes affect our communities? How will they increase the amount of cyclists and not just benefit the existing cyclists? Or if we wanted to make our cyclists safer, why don't we just make a helmet law for everyone and not just people under the age of 18? To answer the second question, we need to go all the way to Australia. In the early 1990s, Australia introduced a mandatory helmet law, or MHL, for all ages. According to the Institute of Public Affairs, this law was a disaster. Taking a direct quote from their article, MHLs change people's behavior and perception of risk. Some cyclists take more risks while wearing helmets than they would without, while studies have shown that some motorists drive closer to helmeted cyclists than unhelmeted ones. This tendency for individuals to react to a perceived increase in safety of bicyclists uh, by taking more risk is known as risk compensation. 
Importantly, helmet laws severely reduce the number of cyclists on the road, leading to increased risk among those who remain through, through sa reduced safety in numbers, a research and acknowledged influence on cyclist accidents and injuries rates. Unsurprisingly, compulsory helmets have also discouraged cycling. While the law, when the law was introduced in the early 1990s, cycling trips have declined 30 to 40 percent overall, uh, and up to 80 percent in some demographic groups, such as females that are in second school, secondary school-aged females. Recapping the quote, MHLs make people think it's okay to take more risks on the road because they're wearing, wearing a helmet. Also, it drastically decreases the number of cyclists on the road because they believe that if cycling requires a helmet law, it can be very safe. To go even further, I have one. I have another quote from Cycle On Ontario's cycling strategy. For potential riders, a concern about safety is one of the top barriers that prevents them from cycling. A perception, a perception that cycling is unsafe, particularly for the people who lack confidence in their cycling skills, reduces the accessibility of cycling. Increased road safety, both real and perceived, will encourage more people to ride more often. Bike lanes will inc increase, make our communities both safer and healthier with the added option of transportation. Bike lanes will encourage other, less confident cyclists to bike more often. Share the Road Cycling Coalition is a cycling advocacy group in Ontario with the goal of making cycling safer in Ontario. Share the Road has many programs such as promoting bike safety and cy cycling in general, such as Wheeling to School, a program that teaches elementary students about how to be safe while biking and gets them to see biking as a routine travel option. Another program is Ride and Drive with Care. Ride and Drive with Care is a pledge that anyone, including students, cyclists, or drivers can take. It's a pledge to always be attentive and careful behind the wheel. Another program Share the Road takes part in is the Bicycle Friendly Community Award. Communities are tested using the five E's, engineering, education, encouragement, enforcement, and evaluation and planning. For engineering, communities are asked what has been built to promote cycling in their community. For education, the community will be asked how much education there is available to cyclists and motorists. For encouragement, questions will be asked about how much the community promotes and encourages biking. For enforcement, questions are asked about the connections between cycling and the law and law enforcement in communities. For evaluation and planning, the community is judged. The community um, is judged on the systems that they have in place to evaluate the current programs and plan for the future. If the community demonstrates achievements in each of, the of these categories, they will be awarded gold, silver, or bronze, depending on the effectiveness of the five E's. This program is a great way to get communities excited about cycling and sa bike safety. To conclude this section, riders will feel safer riding on trails and bike lanes whether or not they have a helmet. While thinking about this important issue, we discovered the Cycle on Cycling Strategy, which touched on the topics tourism, road safety, and infrastructure. By putting in more biking programs like the Bixie Bikes, it lets tourists experience Ontario in a different way, in a more active way. The plan states, in a healthy community, transportation should be possible for trips of five kilometers or less to work, home, and school. To make this feasible, routes need to be safe and convenient for all users. I agree with the statement that not only should most people be able to now ride their bikes to school or work, but that um, these, but they should be safe. To make this possible, we believe that there should be more bike lanes. For example, in the spring, summer, and fall, I ride my bike to school. I ride along Windermere going south, across Bloor Street, and then I arrive at school. While riding, I do not feel safe. This is because of the lack of bike lanes on my path to school. At the moment, biking scares me a bit. But if there were more bike lanes in Toronto and Ontario, I might feel a bit safer. Also, did you know that 78% of Ontarians believe that more people would cycle if there was better infrastructure? One of the reasons Girls Government chose this plan was because it talked about many things that we could do to improve our um, province. With this plan, we can make our city more tourist friendly. We can improve the infrastructure and get more people feeling excited and safe while riding their bikes. One story that the plan had was about bike riding in London, England. In my opinion, one of the best examples of amazing infrastructure is the cycling superhighway network, which is being introduced in London. The result of these superhighways is a safer way to traverse, to traverse the city. The Barclay Cycle Superhighways is a system of bike-friendly routes running from outer London into central London. This is the sort of infrastructure that Ontario needs. We need more bike lanes, bike paths, and places where people can cycle while feeling safe. This plan gives us five goals for our province. If we achieve these goals, Ontario will be a much more bike-friendly province. Goal number one to have Ontario recognized as the best Canadian province for cycling and to be ranked in the top 10 for most bike-friendly places in the world. 
Goal number two, to have most communities in Ontario support cycling for all trips under five kilometers. Goal number three, Ontario's cycling environment is safe for people of all ages attempting to achieve a record of zero fatalities and very few serious injuries. Goal number four, our province's cities and towns have interconnected networks of safe cycling routes enabling people to cycle to work, school and other locations. Goal number five, Ontario has an integrated province-wide network of cycling routes. I believe in girls' government believes that these goals are possible to achieve if we follow this 20-year plan. To make Ontario a healthier and happier province, we should encourage biking more than driving.